Hi there, my friend and friends. How would you solve this problem where you have an element like this and when you hover on the parent, you want it to follow the mouse and when you come off the parent, you want it to reset back to the middle. And when we hover on, you also want to animate to that position and not just jump to that position. And of course, animate back when we're not hovering anymore. This was something I needed to do and I'll show you very quickly why, because it seems a little abstract when we look at it like this. Uh, but the very basics of it aren't too hard. It's the getting the animation on and off that I was really struggling with. And I want to share with you how I got there. And I'm going to challenge you to see if you can figure it out too. Uh, but the very basics of it were very simple, where I did a translate on my X and my Y with custom properties. And then I just used uh, some JavaScript to find the coordinates of where my mouse is, pass those through to the custom properties, and then it will follow my mouse around. There's nothing too complicated with that. But of course, when I do that, it will jump if I go off and then back on. And when I leave, it doesn't go back to the middle. Now I could make this only work on hover if I wanted to, uh, and then it would go back to the middle when I'm not on there, but it would jump back to the middle. This is sort of where I got to. And then I went, well, I could just add a transition, right? That's the easy way to do it. Transition of my translate and we'll say 500 milliseconds. And now it will go to there. The problem is, it lags when I'm moving my mouse around. And for me, this was a problem and it, it didn't work. It just made the entire thing feel very laggy and I, I didn't like that. Um, and of course we get the jump back. I could move that transition to off of the hover so it would transition to and from, but of course I still get this lag. It wasn't the right solution for what I needed. Now, the reason I was doing this in the first place is I was I did a longer video on this. So you might not have watched it. You said, Kevin, that's too long. I'm not gonna look at it, but it was to make this effect it was much slower, but I wanted this background thing that would follow my mouse position as we moved around. I was copying a dribble design I saw that was really cool. So I went with it. But if I didn't have it reset back and be able to get that transition, what would happen is it would actually jump when I would do it. So see, we get like this jumping behavior as I go on and off and it looks really ugly. And again, I've slowed down the animation to make it a lot more obvious that we're getting that click. When you do it at 200 milliseconds, like I'd had it, it really wasn't that bad. Uh, but it was definitely noticeable that there was a jump going on where I wanted something that would be nice and smooth, but still be able to follow the mouse without any lag. So my first thought actually, as you might see, I actually had this mouse over and mouse out here. Uh, and what I was doing is I was adding a hover transition to the button using JavaScript when I would mouse over or mouse out. And that would add a class that I had in my uh, CSS here. Uh, that was transitioning. So only when we had the hover transition class on there, it would give me the transition so it would slide in and out. This works fine, but it felt like something that should be able to be solved with CSS only and that I shouldn't need JavaScript to talk. Like it would put the class on there, have the animation finish and then remove the class from there. And then the same thing when I'd hover on top, we'd add the we'd add this hover transition class, it would do the transition, then it would remove the class works perfectly fine. If that's the solution you'd come up with, then that's awesome. But there is a CSS only solution to this that I was super happy to find out about. And it's also very easy to do. And it sort of made me realize a little bit more about how animations work in CSS. So if you want, I've put this code pen in the link down below. It says start here and you can take this version of it uh, without the transition on there. Um, so we're following the mouse, but it doesn't quite work right now. And you can try and solve this with a CSS only solution if you want. Uh, so I would jump into that now if you are. So pause the video and go see what you can do with it because I'll be sharing my solution shortly. If you do come up with an alternative solution, I would love to know about it. Either let me know on Mastodon or on Twitter or uh, on my Discord community. If you try and put a link in the YouTube comments, it will probably just nuke your comment and we'll never see it. So uh, you'll have to get me on social media of some sort to share it with me because I'd love to know if there are other solutions to this as well that are CSS only. Now, just before I share my solution, I just do want to give credit where it's due. Uh, I got this solution. You can see it's working right here uh, from Matthew Morate. Morate? I hope I said your name right. Sorry if not. Uh, who shared this with me over on Twitter. Very happy about that because it's, it's really cool how it works. And he stole this, uh, as he says, stolen here um, from this demo from Anna Tudor. So thank you both of you uh, for this. It's a really clever solution and I'm really happy to know about it now. And both of those will be linked down in the description if you want to check them out. Uh, but what we're going to do is come back to this version that we have right here and we're going to make it work. And I'll explain why it works and how it works as well. So the first thing we're going to do is an add keyframes and we're going to start with an enter. And for the enter, we're going to, let's grab this. We're going to steal this right here and we're going to do a from 
translate and we're gonna oh I did that wrong we don't want that we want it inside of curly braces let's make this a bit bigger so we can see everything on one line uh, and then we'll do the two I'm gonna do the same thing here <laughs> keep forgetting my curly braces there we go uh, and in this case we actually want it to start at the zero zero which because of how I set things up will be the direct middle um, and then it's going to translate over to where we want it to so let's add that animation here instead of a translate and hopefully having that up there didn't screw you up too much this is a little bit of a trick um, I maybe should have mentioned that you can get rid of that so on the enter uh, we're gonna use that animation is going to be my enter and we'll stick with the 500 milliseconds that I was using uh, and this isn't going to completely work just yet but we're gonna see that now at least it you know when I come on it translates over to where my mouse is because when we hover on top it's running that animation so we're going from the zero zero to the X and the Y here. So it's going to where I want it to be. That's awesome. But it's not perfect because it resets right away. So then what we can do is add in a forwards keyword so we stay at the end of the animation. And this is where the real magic is. So we go forwards and now it follows. My first thought here was, wait, why is it still following my mouse? And this is where I sort of always knew this about CSS animations, but I didn't fully grasp how powerful it could potentially be for this type of thing and probably some other stuff that I'll be very, I think it's one of those things that you're really happy to have in your back pocket and you can pull out when you need it to. So what's happening is if we don't have the forwards on here, it goes and then it resets back to the default, right? So it's not going back to this state here. And this is the same as like a 0% and 100% for my keyframes. So it's not going back to this, it's going back to whatever we had on the hover box, which is nothing. So we just don't have a translate anymore. So it does the full animation, then just goes back to whatever the default styling was. Or not the default styling, but the styling we've applied to it. Then if we add the forwards here, what it's doing is it's gonna run the animation, but then it gets to the last frame and it stays at the last frame. I'm sure you've sort of known that before. I've always known this, but what's powerful about this in this case, and the reason it's working and still following my mouse is this translate, this last frame, it's staying right here. So that means it's staying looking at the X and the Y and those are constantly being updated by my JavaScript over here. So it just works and it just follows. And that means it will go back to the middle and then I enter and it follows and then I go off and it goes back to the middle. The one thing with this is we can't use this again exactly. So what we need to do if we want it to work entering and exiting, since it's only working in one direction right now, is I'm going to duplicate this and just remove the hover. Um, we like you know you might think that you could do a reverse here, so it runs backwards. The problem with this is it won't work. Um, it will work in one direction, but you can see it's actually completely broken now. So I'm just going to save this and refresh my page just to make sure that it's. We're completely uh, refreshed and it should actually, oh, it's not working in any direction. This, I thought it might work once, but it's not even working in one direction uh, because it's already, I think, in the reverse state. So it's already sitting here uh, or not there here. It's sitting at the end. So the front, whatever, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, the problem with animations is if you don't change the animation's name, it won't rerun the animation a second time, even if you change the direction of the animation, because it sees the same animation name there. It just goes, that animation's already there. I'm not changing anything. So what we need to do is actually have a second animation for the other direction. But that's also okay, because it makes it a little bit more obvious what's happening, because I have an enter, and then I can do an exit right here. And then I can just make this one my two and make this one here my from. Uh, we can actually leave it exactly like this. You don't have to change the order, even though it's backwards now, so you probably would want to. Um, but now here, I just do my exit going forwards. So that means normally it's in the middle. We're, we're on the exit. The exit is going to a translate of zero, zero, so we're there. If I go here, we're now in the hover state, so we're in the enter and it's following. And then I'm gonna go back to my exit when I go off because we're re removing this version of it and we're going back to this version of it and it just works and it's pretty cool. Uh, and it's nice because we have an exit, we have an enter, it's pretty straightforward what they're doing. I would, as I said, take this and just move it down to make it a little bit more obvious the order of it, but the order of things doesn't matter. It's the keyframes that are assigned to them that does matter. 
But yeah, I thought that was really a cool thing. Uh, I didn't go in depth into how it was working or why it was working in that other video that I mentioned. So I sort of wanted to break it down a little bit more. And I also wanted to get a bit more eyeballs on this because I think some people might watch this video and have missed the other one or hopefully not vice versa. But at least if you saw the other one, you'd get an idea that this type of thing is possible. But if you do want to see how I made this and let's go to the, the actual speed of, of what it was like, we can see here, it, I think it looks pretty good. I, I like it. Uh, so if you'd like to see how I did all of this with the glass morph and the styling and it even has this cool little thing right there well that video is right here for your viewing pleasure and with that I would like to thank my enablers of awesome Philip Andrew Simon and Tim as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support and of course until next time don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome